Amen, amen. Thank you very much. You guys could please have a seat. And uh, as I get situated over here, um, if you would do me a favor and look to your neighbor and say, you're not here by chance. And uh, to you online, you're not watching by chance. You know, um, I believe God has a word for us tonight. And um, I'm excited to give it because it's not for me. It's from God. And what God wants to do um, as we continue to move forward as a church, as a follower of Christ, as an individual, um, God just wants to breathe some new life into us. Like Pastor Josh says, he wants to extend that zeal, extend that fire. And I believe that's what he's going to do through his word today. So before we get into it, I just want to just uh, give this over to God and just open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity, Father God, to, to speak your words. Lord, you have my heart. You have my life. Lord, I pray that you would use me today, Father God, that spirit and truth would be spoken. Father God, as the Holy Spirit leads me today, Father God, I pray that the fire would catch, that your children would receive this message, Father God. Not only receive it, but apply it and know who they are, Father God. Apply it to know their inheritance of who they are, children of the Most High God the power and authority that comes behind that. And Lord, we thank you for your son who died on the cross for our sins. The price has already been paid. The debt's already been paid. You just want to be in relationship with us today. So I pray that we would grab hold of that and receive it. For it's your name we pray. And all God's people say, amen, amen. amen. Wow. I'm excited to be here today. And uh, we're, like Pastor Josh said, we're continuing our series called Make His Name Famous. And I was, I was going and studying through this. Um, God spun me around completely. <laughs> Everything I had prepared for, he gave me something different this morning. So um, that's what I know it's of God. Um, everything, I'm very prepared. Uh, as you can see, I have my tablet, I have my Bible. I also printed out my notes. Um, that's just how prepared I am. But God says, no, no, it's not you that's going to do it. It's me that's going to do it. So um, I started thinking about how do we make his name famous. And I first wanted to look up the definition of, of famous, and it reads, known by many people. And I started to think, how can I apply that in my message? And it's simple. Um, we can just embody who Christ is. Um, we can be Christ-like, little Christians, um, just be like our father. And I started to study some scripture on that and see the direction in which that was going. And it, it's really us being the lights into the world. And that's what I wanted to open up my first scripture. It's, it's in the book of uh, Matthew, and I'm in the NIV version. It uh, reads out of chapter 5, 14 through 16. It says, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. Come on. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So if we ask the question, how do we make our name famous, it, it's, it's simple right there. It's we let our light shine before men. As we're out there in work, school, gym, grocery store, people may never experience who Christ is, but through our light, they may get a taste of who he is, and that will draw them. Because there's an anointing that's on us through the Holy Spirit, and God will overflow that to draw them to you. And that's what I want to talk about. And... Um, there's just a few things that, that God gave me to speak out to you guys. And if the ushers could just pass out these cards. Um, could we just give a hand to my wife, Brittany, who these last minute, I said, God gave me a word. Can you print these cards for me? And, man, she's so awesome. I love her. She's, she's always there for me. She, she's my number one. So thank you, Brittany, for doing that and allowing uh, God to, to use you in that area as well as um, just thankful for you. I love you. And... Um, as we go through these cards, once everybody gets them, um, I just want to kind of go over what, what God wants to remind us as we continue to make his name famous. Amen. So um, give it a few minutes. But um, also, if you notice, if you have your card or not, it's April 17th, 2024. And there's a specific reason why I put the date on that card, because April's, the month of April celebrates new beginnings. And the number 17 biblically means victory and perfection. And I believe that's what God wants to do tonight. He wants to new beginnings, and he wants you to receive his victory and perfection. And um, that's not by chance. 
like I said, not by chance we're here. Um, looks like almost everybody has them now. So um, these are what God wants to give us, little, little tools. And I printed it out because we need to put this where we can be reminded of who we are. And um, at the end of the day, we're just children. We're God's children. And um, we're growing. We're learning. And we're not fully grown until we meet our Father in heaven. So there's always going to be time for us to, to learn new things, to, to grow, and to be more like Christ. So uh, the first one I just want to go over, it says, in Christ Jesus, I am strong. Like, we need to know that. When we're out there being the light of the world, we need to know in Christ Jesus, we are strong. God's word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's one of my favorite. Anytime I get bombarded or I feel like I'm overwhelmed, I speak that. And I tell you, I kid you not, my, my atmosphere changes, my Holy Spirit changes, because that's God's living word, and I'm speaking it, and I'm putting it out there, and God says, my word does not return void. So um, I encourage you as you go through these seasons, remember that in Christ I am strong. And also, remember God has a plan for you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says what? I know the plans for you, plans for to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. Remember that. God has plans for you. You know, a lot of the times, maybe we don't feel like God's got a plan for us. Maybe we're feel like we don't have talent or maybe God's not using us the way we want to be used. But I can think of one person in the Bible. This is one of my favorite characters is David, obviously. Um, the only skill he had in the beginning was he could sling rocks. And God used that for what? To slay some giants, right? So we might have a little in our eyes, but God can make it big. So I want to encourage you that God has a plan for you in that area. And to know that you're not alone in what you're going through. We all go through the same thing. Sometimes the enemy tries to attack our minds and make it seem like, hey, I'm the only person that's going through this, you know, and uh, there's freedom when we speak. And I think that's why it's so awesome to have these small groups because we can express what we're going through and um, God can heal us in that sense. So if you haven't been to a small group, uh, I would highly suggest uh, going for it because God um, let us know that we're not alone doing this. And um, the next one is, I am loved for who I am, not for what I do. Okay, remember that. <laughs> that, that. That's a tough one because a lot of the times we think what we do, we're loved and we're serving God. But that's not the key. God already paid the price. He already died on the cross for the sins. We just need to be in relationship and love him. Amen? And this is the one that I'm constantly going through is I'm growing. <laughs> I'm, I'm constantly growing. Um, spiritually, as a father, in my workplace, in all areas of my life. And I need to know as I'm growing that there's going to be, you know, some shortcomings, unfortunately. But I've always known to keep moving forward. And that's what I want you guys to know. As we're growing, sometimes we're, we're going to fall short. But that's fine. It just gives God an opportunity to, to en enrich us, to take us past that, that, that level. I remember, um, man, the first time I ran a marathon, I was uh, training with my uncle who had been doing Ironmans, and he asked me, he's like, you want to run this marathon? I said, yeah, I'd, I'd love to, you know. I had never ran more than 16 miles, and uh, I was like, yeah, let's, let's go do it, you know. And so we get out there, race day, he shoots off. And I'm like, okay, I got this. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. Start seeing the miles, and I, like I said, I never ran past 16 miles. And it seemed like as soon as I hit 16 miles, mentally I was just like, I can't do this anymore. My, my body felt heavy. I was just all in my head. And I was like, I've never been past this point. I don't know what I can do. I don't know if I can make it. And I started drifting back from the pack, started fading back. And I was like, oh. And the rule number one as a runner is you never walk. You might have a slow pace that's slower than a walk, but you never walk. You never go flat-footed. And I kid you not, I'm about to go flat-footed. And some guy taps me on the back and says, no, you got this. Keep going. 16th mile. i never seen this guy the whole time. This guy is encouraging me. He's just building me up the whole time of running. And we, before you know it, we're almost done to the race. We're coming to the last mile. And uh, he's like, go ahead, just finish strong, finish strong. So I, I finish, and, I, and I'm looking for this guy, and, I, and I, never, I never could find him. And I always try to play back his image, and his face is kind of blurred because when you're running, you're looking straight. But he was there, and he was always encouraging me. And I got to believe that was an angel sent from God just keeping me to going. And there's something that happened in that moment. I realized that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, I thought I couldn't run that. I physically had never been that far. I didn't know I could do that. But God knew what I was capable of. God knew 
I could run that easy. And I did. I ran it. No problem. I wasn't tired after. But I just needed that encouragement. And sometimes that's what we need. We need God's encouragement. Amen? So that's what's going. And then Jesus understands what I'm feeling. I kind of went off on there. I don't know if I went that one. But <laughs> Jesus understands what I'm feeling. And the last one is God working in it even though, excuse me, God's working through me even if it doesn't feel like it. That, that's a tough one because he is. He's always there even when it doesn't feel like it. And, um, man, that's, that's a tough one because uh, you, feel, you feel like you're, you sometimes go through pain. You go through suffering. You go through discomfort. And you feel like God's not with you. But I'm reminded of when me and my wife were getting ready to have Iris that she was going through all these things. For nine months, she dealt with discomfort. She dealt with pain. She dealt with uh, just not being being physically happy or just, you know, fr frustrated, discomfort. And, um, man, ap after that nine months, I saw the blessing that came out of it, the birth. And that's what God is doing when he's taking us through these situations, these discomfort, this um, pain. He's getting ready to birth something. And that's what we want to focus on. And as I think of that, I'm reminded of uh, Genesis. In the book of Genesis 16, uh, Sarah um, Sarah, she was, uh, man, she was, she was old. She was old and, uh, God had given her a word to, uh, have a child and she did not believe it. You know, how many times have we been given a word and we just don't believe it? You know, the hardest part is to stay in faith and know that God's going to do it. And, um, the reason why I'm sharing this story is because myself personally, I've done that in my in my walk with God, I've, I've tried to speed up the process. I've tried to do it my own way. And that's what, that's what Sarah did. She, she was promised to be a mother of a nation. And God gave her that promise. But Sarah became impatient. She started to look at her age and circumstances and didn't believe in God. And through that, she began to do things her way. So what she did is she had a maidservant. And she told this maid servant, you sleep with my husband because I don't think I can have children. And God said, no. <laughs> but she still did it. And many times God says no to us and we still do it. And we try to figure it out and we wonder why things aren't working out the way it should. And um, so what happens? So they have a child by the name of Ishmael, and um, 13 years later happened, 13 years pass, and she begins to just, like, feel discomfort, and she's like, this isn't right. You know, she knows in her spirit that God gave her a promise, and the promise wasn't to her maidservant. The promise was to her. He birthed that promise in her, and God wanted to fulfill that. So God went to Abraham, and he said, I'm going to give you a child with your wife, Sarah. And the scripture says he dropped to his face and he laughed. He said, I'm 100 years old and she's 90. And um, yeah, that, that, that's, what, that's, <laughs> that's the reality of it. If we were to say that nowadays, we're like, what? But God, God doesn't live by those circumstances. God doesn't look at that says that God, God can do all things. All things are possible through God. And so... What I wanted to highlight is when we go through this walk, it doesn't matter the age or the timing. It's the promise that happened. And God's promise was fulfilled. They had a child. And, he was the, and she was a mother of many nations. She actually was the genealogy of Christ. So through that, if she never would went out in faith and fulfilled her purpose, then she would have never, she would have never walked into that destiny. She would have never experienced that, that blessing. And sometimes we, we get like that. You know, we get impatient. We get to the point where we say, you know, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um, God's timing. God's timing. I, I can speak on behalf of my, myself again. Um, there's so many things in my life where I tried to do it my way or I got impatient. But when I gave it to God, he just, he just moved and he moved expediently. He went fast. He moved fast because it was his timing and it was his word that I was standing on. And... I believe that God just wants to, to, 
He wants to release something today. He wants, he wants to release to know the promises are coming. The promises are coming. Like I said, I don't believe nobody's here by chance. I believe this word is for each and every one of us. We've been called and we've been chosen. God's word says many are called, but few are chosen. I believe everybody's here tonight. Everyone watching online has been chosen. And God wants to separate you tonight. And God wants to show you. And God wants to apply a zeal into your life tonight. Now, you just heard the story of Sarah and what God can do. Now, that's what he wants to do in your life. Everybody has their own promise that they're ready to birth. Only you know in your heart what God's promised you. But I know that God's called us to be a light into the world. And as we continue to be faithful in what we've been called to do, because we all have an assignment. We were all born with a purpose and a promise. But we have an assignment to preach the good news, to be the light into the world. That's what God wants us to do because this, this freedom we have, it's not just for us. It's for everybody out there. And I believe as we continue to move forward as a church, God wants to raise up some mighty men and women. He wants some fire. He wants, to, he wants these arms and legs to extend outside these walls, outside of Hollister into your workplace. And this word is for maybe you feel like you're not that person. Maybe you feel like you just received Christ today. Maybe you served Christ for 20 years. It doesn't matter any time or point. Today God is saying today is perfection and victory, and it's for you. Amen? In Matthew 16, 15, Jesus gives us this great commission. And I believe that's what God wants to set the table tonight. Um, so God, I'm going to read the, out of Matthew 16, 15, 18, if you guys have it. It's, again, it's Matthew chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. Jesus gives a great commission. And I believe he wants to speak this tonight to start releasing that into the people and to his people and to his children. Because like I said, we're all his children and we're all growing but we got to know who we are and we got to activate the gifts that are within. We got to pick up that rock, that slingshot, and we got to apply it to those giants. Amen. Okay. It says, and Jesus gives the great commission. He said to them, go into the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my, in the, in them. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and they will, they will drink deadly poison, but it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick, and they sh will recover. And, I, and every time I was, I, was, I was in prayer, God kept on bringing that forth. Lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are sick in need spiritually, and God wants to use us tonight to reach that kingdom. Like I said, he doesn't want us just coming to church and just sitting. He wants to activate us. He wants those gifts to use because that's what he gave us. He gave us those gifts to use them for his purpose, for his glory. And he wants to know everyone here tonight has full access to that. They have full access to those gifts and he wants to release them today. So one of the prayers, oh, man, as I was praying, he, he put in my heart and, um, if we could just, just lift our hands, because God said, bless their hands. So I'm just going to pray this prayer over our, our hands, and um, I believe God's just, just, just going to do it through the word. It says, God, let these hands be blessed hands. Let them be healing hands, Father God. In Jesus' name, Lord, let these hands move. Let these hands be of deliverance. Let these hands be hands that lay on the sick and they shall recover. Let these hands be hands that heal up the brokenhearted. Let these hands be hands that heal, deliver the mentally disturbed and the vexed. Let these hands be hands that bind up wounds of the mind, body, and spirit. Heavenly Father, give us hands that will release prosperity and blessing upon ourselves and others. Amen. God, God is doing something. He's activating. And uh, <laughs> receive it. Receive it. And uh, after I say that, there's this, the song that plays in my head after, right after we just prayed. And I don't know if you remember it from Sunday school, but it says, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> and that's what I feel that God is doing tonight. Like, there's an impartation that's taking place through his word. Because it's God's word. It's living. It's breathing. It's, it's that spirit that dwells within us. So it feeds us. It shows us who we are. 
And man, it's, it's so awesome to be able to experience that. And uh, this year has been so, so busy for me that um, sometimes I feel like I can't go any further. But God says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And maybe you feel like that. Maybe you feel like this year has been been just a lot of work, and you feel like, man, I can't go any further. And God is God is saying, no, that that's not. I created you to all things to do all things. All things are are possible through my Spirit. And uh, man, it, it's exciting to know that that we can do that and push through and. Um, I'm just up here to share that. I'm just one person and just, just submitting to God. Um, a lot of you know I grew up in a church, and um, if I'm being honest, I never wanted to be part of a church, if I'm being honest. And um, that, that was kind of like, that was my dad's thing. That was my mom's thing, you know, and I, I was on a different path. I was like, you know, that, that's not for me. But God has the promise, the promise, right, that no one can stop. <laughs> the birth at 90 years old. No one can stop that on you. So I, I'm here to tell you that there's a promise on your life. And only you know what that is because that's between you and God. And God wants to know tonight that that promise is being released, but to stand on his word. What's his word? He reminded you, in Christ Jesus, I'm strong. God has a plan for me. I'm not alone in what I'm going through. I am loved for who I am, not for what I do. I am growing Jesus understands me, what I'm feeling. God is working in me and through me, even if it doesn't feel like it. Because I feel like that right now. <laughs> if I'm being honest. But again, it's, it's about stepping out of the boat. You know, it's about stepping out of the boat and being faithful to God. And that's all I have ever wanted to do. It's just to be faithful to God. And if that means me coming up here and sharing my experiences, then that's what I want to do. I want to be faithful to God. You know, I always ask God to use me and it's not always the way that we, we picture it, you know. Um, a lot of you guys, I know uh, I've done your floors, and I believe that's how God uses me to bless people. Amen? <laughs> and I will continue to do that as long as God gives me breath because that's a gift that he gave me, and that's just who I am. I'm just, I just want to use the gifts. I just want to be all that God has for me. Um, so as I come up here, that, that's what I do. I, I'm not this, this great speaker. Uh, I'm not this, you know, adequate preacher, but I just want to come up here and be faithful. <laughs> that, that's all. And, I, and I, hopefully that encourages you to be faithful in whatever you have that's, that's you know, that God has put you in place. Um, like I said, we're all being used by God. It's, it, it looks in different ways. So um, I encourage you, step out of the boat. Step out of the boat and let God, God do what he wants to do because... It's, it's so much greater on the other side. Like that marathon, you don't know what you're capable of until you go there, until you run that. Now, I, I can run that no problem because I've seen it, I've done it. That's how it is when the things of God, when you've, when you've come through those trials, when you go through those situations, when you've overcome the sickness, when you've overcome, you know, the, the, the prodigal, when he comes back, you realize God is in control. God has got me. It's, it's all his timing. All it is is just him working on you. He's working on you to prepare you for what you have. And again, I'm reminded of another David. I'm going to always go back to David because I relate so much with David. But God, God anointed him at 13, but yet put him in the shepherd field. Why? Because he was doing something there. He was, he was shepherding the sheep. He was preparing a king to watch over his people with that love and protect them. And that's what God does with us. He's, he's putting us in the shepherd field to prepare us for something greater. At the age of 30, he became the king. So there, there's, a, there's a kingdom purpose in each and one of us. Amen? And that's what God just, I feel like that's what he wants to share tonight. When we're making his name famous, we're, we're being that light. We're being that, that person that's, that's going out there saying, I'm going to live for Christ. I'm going to be the body of Christ. I'm going to go out there and and just be the example of who Christ is. People may not know Jesus, but maybe through my actions, they'll get a taste of him. And, they'll, and this happens to me all the time at work. They'll, they'll come to me and say, man, what's, what's different about you? And at that moment, that's where I'm able to preach them because their heart is open to receive it because they're now asking the question, what makes you different? I say, that's simple. You know, I have a Savior by the name of Jesus Christ 
died for my sins. I now live in freedom because of that price that was paid. I'm no longer bound to sin. I know the power and authority that I operate in because that's what he gave me. That's, that's my inheritance as a child of God. So remember that, the inheritance, the hands. God's going to create opportunities for you, someone to come into your path and use that gift that was activated today. And just remember that. That God is already preparing you. Tonight he's preparing you. It could be tomorrow at work. It could be right when you leave here. It could be at home. It could be a family member calling you. But God is going to do something and use you. Because that's what we're called to do. Amen? Amen, amen. I'm taking a few minutes because I, I just I just want to let God filter filter what he's going to do. Um, like I said, I, I had something already prepared, but he just he just moved. He just moved on my heart. <laughs> and it's it's again, it's a stepping out of the boat moment because like I told you, I'm very prepared. I have my notes. I have my tablet. I have my Bible. I'm usually three or four days ahead. But that, that's my moment of stepping out and stepping out of the boat today up here. And I'm like, Lord, just lead me, <laughs> please, because I'm putting my trust in you. And sometimes that's how it looks. That's how it looks. Maybe I'm that example that we need to see. Like, hey, he's out there in the water. But you know what? I'm looking at him. <laughs> I'm looking right up at him and said, I'm, I'm giving you my best, Lord. I'm giving you my all. I'm giving you my heart. Just lead me. Lead me. And I think that's what he wants to do with us tonight. He wants to lead us. He wants to move. Man, thank you, Jesus. I just want to take a moment to be sensitive to the spirit because I feel like he's moving. I don't know about you guys, but have you noticed how powerful this worship has been this last couple of weeks? Come on, let's give it up for, let's give it up for God, man. It, it's, it's, it's so powerful. And I think it's, it's so powerful because our hearts, we're, we're, we're praising and we're ushering God. But man, it's just, it's, it's something different that God is doing. He's preparing us to go beyond, beyond. And it's exciting. It's exciting because it's the unknown, but I can see it. I see legacy being this light on a hill in our city. I see every person in legacy, the body of Christ, just being a flame, just a flame going out there. That, that, that's what I'm seeing. I'm just seeing Legacy Church as a, the body of Christ is a flame. God is, is stirring it up. He's doing a, a fresh win. And man, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. I, I, okay, so April 17, 2024. <laughs> I'm just remembering this day because, man, God is going to take us beyond these walls. We're, we're going to be a light into the city. I'm telling you right now, God is going to do it. And he's going to do it with the help of each and every one of us. You know, if I think of uh, Genesis, the beginning, you know, you think of Moses and how we freed those people. And uh, those people were just slaves, building brick by brick by brick, building Pharaoh's wall. But God had a different plan for them. He freed them. He freed those slaves. And they began to build a different legacy. They began their legacy of God. God gave them a word and they obeyed the word. And they moved forward. And man, that's what God is doing here at Legacy. He's building a kingdom beyond these walls. And I, I just can't say it enough. I just, I just feel it like just, just bubbling, bubbling. Like I see it. It's going to be sooner than we think. It's going to be sooner than we think. And um, I don't know about you, but I'm excited. You guys should be excited because we're on a kingdom mission, <laughs> each and every one of us. And uh, I feel like he's just preparing our hearts and preparing our spirits for what's ahead. You know, um, we don't see it. We don't, we don't see it at all, but God sees it. He sees, the, he sees three steps ahead already. He just, he just wants the heart. And that's what I believe he wants tonight is the heart. So we've heard the story of the promise. We received the prayer for the impartation. But now there's a part that we have to do. 
We have to give him our heart. And not just a smidge, not just a portion, all of it. That's the final key. So maybe you've never done that. Maybe you've never given him your whole heart. Maybe there's a few things in there that need to be shifted around. I just want to create this opportunity, if you've never received him in your heart, to receive him. If you could just raise your hand if that's you, if you want to receive Christ in your heart for the very first time. Thank you. I believe we're among saints. And what God has showed me is confirm that there is a zeal in here. But he wants to set that heart on fire. He wants to release it. So if we could just please stand for a moment. <laughs>